Hey guys, I'm Lance. And I'm Kayla. We are the Jade of Roses, and this is our Broken Mirror. Where we dive deep down and take a really good look at ourselves, each other, and everything around us. Let's just hope we don't get any glass lodged somewhere unseemly. Alright, so I actually have story time. Okay. We are actually recording this on October 24th, 2020, which is the 20th anniversary of Linkin Park's first album, (gasps) Hybrid Theory love it figured we would just you know kind of go back Uh, and reminisce i would Um, love nothing also rest in peace chester beddington love you chester oh my beautiful soul beautiful soul truly like i love i can't believe it's been 20 years to the date honestly to the day we timed this right and kind of on accident yeah i was gonna say like this was totally on accident because I know we text about the 20th anniversary, which I already downloaded the album of their 20th anniversary release. Same. And so the fact that you are just like, know that this is the 20th, I'm like, hello, I no, am look, here. I'm so happy that I checked Facebook like as soon as I woke up, because I still follow Linkin Park on Facebook unashamedly. I'm, Don't at me. I was just saying. But, and they had the post and it was like, happy 20th hybrid theory. And I was like, oh, oh my God, it's today. I cannot believe that. That's so wild as a concept to me. It really is. Yes. I, wow. Because isn't some of the songs used also for the Jay-Z album they did with him? I believe. Cause, uh, yes. Yes. Some of them were like re-records and remixes. Yeah. yeah, remixes. But yeah, this is like, oh my god. What a, what a time warp. Like, one step closer. Oh my god. In the end, like, I can't definitely one step closer i feel like in the end has become so much of a meme it doesn't quite have the same emotional impact on me unless i'm having like a really bad day that's fair (laughs) that's fair i think it still has a really deep emotional connection to me just because it was one of those first songs that did connect with me that wasn't like Mm -hmm. a song that uh my family listened to like linkin park was one of those first bands for me that i it was like a recommendation of a friend rather than something i grew up with basically Mm -hmm, right and so like they were a big thing for me like when chester actually died my sister contacted me to say hey just so you know and i remember getting the message in while i was like trying to do work and at school and i was just like oh my god this is my life now this is not reality like there's 80 songs on this edition like they have remixes That's with other lot. people. Like I, this had to. They take, went all out. They, I was gonna say this had to take so much time, which is amazing and deserved. Let's not forget. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Songs like "By Myself" really catered to the old emo me. But like, yeah, if I started feeling any kind of way, I was like, everybody needs to go away. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm trying to think of which one of these probably impacted me the most. Because, definitely one step closer for me. Yeah, one step closer definitely impacted me. I think in the end also impacted me. Because again, it's one of those things where in the end it was just literally the lyric was in the end it doesn't even matter. Like I was just mm. like and I was going through um it was the start of my depression age and well close to it. And so I was just really in that mindset of just what does any of this matter? Like mm. and just definitely in depression mode. <laughs> so um right. in the end always will hold a special place for me for that reasoning. It'll, just like Link Park will hold a special place for me just because of the fact that it was one of the first bands that I got introduced to outside of what I knew. Right. So one step closer for me, just in the spirit of explaining. Mm-hmm. It probably won't surprise you because I think we've talked about it before, but it might surprise some of the listeners that I actually grew up with anger problems. Yeah. And at a fairly young age, I was like seven or eight, mm-hmm. I had to go to therapy for it. And it's why I generally don't get angry much anymore. Though I do think doing it that young kind of reinforced my tendency to inwardly direct my negative emotions. Mm-hmm. So it's 
probably a huge contributing factor to like my depression and stuff. But that aside, One Step Closer embodies that part of me that I remember but can't really access anymore. Mm. Just like the, no, you you need to shut up Mm -hmm. because if you say one more word, I'm going to explode and no one's going to like it. Yeah. But I also wanted to mention on In the End how I think in the moment One Step Closer impacted me a lot more the first time I heard it. Mm -hmm. But In the End has become almost like my philosophy in life. I guess, spoiler, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm a nihilist. Nothing matters. (laughs) But I think it stemmed from In the End, personally. Mm. I, I feel like they inadvertently shaped my entire outlook on life. But that came much later. Yeah, I think I I think that was the theme. At the time, like, I didn't really understand why it was impacting me at the time. But it was definitely having an impact on me. And now I can see, like, based on what I was going through and what I was feeling at the time, it makes total sense why I was, like, drawn to One Step Closer. I was drawn to Crawling. I was drawn to In the End, you know, Forgotten, mm-hmm. whatever. I was just very drawn because it was just one of the, it was also one of the first times where people were addressing these feelings that I was aware of because like I also didn't know if this was a common thing other people dealt with so it was just like one of those like is this something that's actually common is this something like this one person has felt or like the songwriter felt or whatever and so because I know for the most part Chester and Mike write the songs right I think along with other members you know it was one of those times where I didn't know that and so I was just like I don't know if I'm feeling because of how the songs put together if it's the lyrics or what have you i mean no matter what you can feel whatever emotion was impacted through that song for sure something i've noticed throughout lincoln parks albums in general like each one is a different stage of their lives and what they're having to deal with which i really appreciate when an artist does that or a band does that because like nothing stays the same everything's evolving and it makes sense that your music needs to evolve as you evolve as a person and as a band definitely concur you touched on something oh the like it was the first time you were hearing music like that Mm -hmm. and you weren't aware that like a other people were experiencing it yeah but b someone else was experiencing it enough to put it to paper yeah i'm only gonna detract a little while from lincoln park because it is their time to shine Mm mm-hmm And we've talked about it before, but that band for me was My Chemical Romance. Yes. Each of their albums has a completely different attitude and outlook as far as external things that are out of your control or emotions that you are feeling. And my initial introduction to MZR was Three Cheers album, which I think was the case for most fans of the band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To me, that whole album, like, screams, like, it's okay to be sad it's okay to feel what you feel yeah and as i don't want to say as like a private person because i was never really raised to be private but my mom raised my brother and i Mm -hmm. without showing a lot of negative emotion like if she was going to cry she would go shut herself off in her room Mm -hmm. so that we didn't see it so that we didn't have like that loss of a protector or a loss of stability. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like most parents do that. And I, I ended up carrying that for forever, apparently (laughs) to the point where, like I said earlier, I direct all of my negative emotions inward. Like I don't tend to cry. Like I'll cry at something that's, sad Mm -hmm. like a sad movie or something but like if something is going on in my life that's just really stressing me out i will cry by myself i don't let other people show or get to see i don't show other people is what i was trying to say Mm -hmm. my negative side and that whole album for me was like the okay stamp that i needed that's just like it's okay yeah i think it's interesting because I, because like for me, I didn't really see it as like it's a, it's like an internal sign, I guess. I saw it as like it was one of the first times where I heard lyrics point blank just saying, I'm not okay. This is not okay. God, yes. And like I hadn't really experienced that before. And this was around the time where it was like middle school, where, um you know, you're getting big into mm-hmm. anime. 
thing. You're getting used to, like, your friends, and you're going over a lot more, and you're, like, dabbling in what they're interested in. And, like, you know, you said My Chemical Romance was one of yours. That was one of the things I was introduced to, along with Panic. And it was just, like, it was a whole time of life where people were just point blank saying, I'm not okay. I'm doing this to try and get by and to get myself to be okay. And, like, sometimes I still have to acknowledge I'm not okay. I know you took me back so panic i actually found by myself mm. well not like by myself it's not like i was googling for new bands but like i do believe it was the i write sins not tragedies video that i saw on fuse tv and oh my like, god put that me looks back. like a man who knows what's going on mm -hmm. and he's talking about a cheating wife i love it mm -hmm. this is disillusionment at its best yes I need this album. It was, and yeah. to this day, it is my favorite debut album of all time. It's definitely up there for me. I think it's because I, I've i progressed with Panic on, you know, they've been through different band members. They've changed their sounds a lot. Oh, yes. And, you know, nothing nothing horrible as standard stuff bands do. But I, I do appreciate each album is so different and so complimentary yes. to their voices or his voice, whichever album we're talking about. Like, don't get me wrong, like, the second album with the Green Gentleman, I forget what the album is called. Pretty Odd. Oh, is that, that, that was so simple. <laughs> pretty Odd. Well, it's got, it's got periods, Pretty Odd. <laughs> Fuck. But, yeah, I mean, Pretty Odd was like, it wasn't my favorite. But it didn't introduce me, like, that song introduced me back into, like, I like country, and I like people who do more guitar and are a bit more indie. And that's what that mm. band, that's what that album introduced me to. I was like, oh, I kind of like this indie style. Granted, it was definitely, it's, if I'm ranking albums, that was not my favorite <laughs> No, it's probably that, my that last has to be, album. Yeah, that has to be my least favorite yeah. Panic album, mm -hmm. but... I appreciate what they were trying to do. Exactly. I I, I just, and maybe it's, because it's been a while since I listened to it. Mm -hmm. So I might now have cultivated, like, the taste for it. But, like, when it first came out, yeah. Nine in the Afternoon was the only song I liked. That was the only, literally. that one, and I liked another one. And the, uh, the other song, um, I think it's the Green Little Gentleman song. Mm -hmm. That one, actually, that's what introduced me to, I think I kind of like folk. I kind of like this style. You see, I've I've never really been partial to folk, so like it just I don't want to say it rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, it was still panic, but mm -hmm. it was just like mm, I'm a I'm a listen to Fever again. <laughs> yes, and I guess that's my thing. Like I I like the Lumineers. My favorite thing right now is like a soulful, um, deep voice hmm. and singing to me about any troubles in their lives. Like that's my current theme during uh the quarantine. That has been my main thing is like that Johnny Cash aesthetic. Yes, basically yes. And anyone if I see someone with a Johnny Cash aesthetic, I'm like, hello, we need to talk. <laughs> Who are you? I literally saw there was a commercial um for a car. I did not the guy on the commercial looked like another guy I listened to. And I was like, that's not him, though. So who is that? And I, I was obsessed with trying to figure out who the hell this guy was. It took me three weeks to figure it out because I could, I refused. I was like, there's something in this commercial I'm missing. I don't understand what. And, like, they had his music playing in the background, which I think also emphasized, like, oh, this is kind of interesting. But, um, yeah, it was, like, really weird. Like, right now, the aesthetic is, like, I totally understand. It's a very great aesthetic, which is a thick man with a nice big beard, deep voice. Like, I totally get the aesthetic. I'm here for that. You want those depressed lumberjack vibes. I, I'm in the mood, man. <laughs> 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 like, I'm in that mood. But don't get me wrong. Like, if Mike Shinoda said, would you like to go on a date with me? I would be saying, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. Exactly. Ding, ding. So it's like, I really have, like, a vast range of people I would be interested in <laughs> if they had a slight interest in me. <laughs> For all you uh, eligible people out there. Hello, how you doing? Very single. <laughs> for very long. I've never really been, I actually never had a public forum before. Right. It's it's different. Yeah. I was going to say, you've, you're used to this because you used to do a Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. Oh yes, it's time to pop up a podcast. <laughs> I think that's such a creative I'll name. I'll take my money now. Mm-hmm. I still have a couple of emails from people that are like, when are you going to come back? And I, I feel bad, but that was a lot for one person to do, y'all. That was a lot. Yeah. It was a ton for one person to do. Like, I, I had to watch so much anime. 
Oh, the tortures of life. Yeah. Anime, right. <laughs> the tortures of life. As if we don't already, like, go watch anime sometimes from here and there. Like, right. I haven't watched this in forever. I started watching Sailor Moon again recently. <gasps> yeah. And the reboot or the oldie? The oldie. I haven't watched the reboot oh, yet. I need to watch the reboot. I haven't either. No, I watched like five seconds of it, mm-hmm. but I, I didn't. It was one of those days where I didn't have the mental fortitude to concentrate. So yes. Well, I forgot, and I think I did this on purpose because if for anyone who watches, on pur- yes, I forgot this on purpose. Oh, so anyone who watches the anime, whether you're used to um, Serena, which is the English version name, or uh, what's uh, Usagi, I think is her name. She's alone for like seven episodes oh. she's alone and annoying for seven episodes i mean she's pretty much always annoying i know but the other people are there usually to like soften <laughs> to help mitigate yes to soften the blow but when you have no studio you don't understand this character's awful i know it's like like and then um because i went through because i was like how long until because i knew amy comes first I was like, when, how long until she comes in? I was like, I need Sailor Mercury in here now. Because I, I knew she was the first one. And I thought it was like two or three episodes before she came in. It was seven. I was like, no. Seven. I think what I literally did was said, no, not into this. And I went and just went to her episode. Because I was like, I can't do her alone. Like, See, that's what I'd do. I would read the synopses on Crunchyroll or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then skip ahead to the more tolerable. Yes. And that was where I was going because I was like, I can't just do her alone. And then, um, because like I knew the order and I remember the order because like you meet Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and then you meet Venus and like literally you meet Venus and then literally you have a two part episode, which is amazing two parter. But it's a wild concept. But they have so much more of it now um, with subtitles and dubbed on Hulu. Of the older seasons mm-hmm. and like the old series, but it's a. I need to reactivate my Hulu. It's a yeah. Hulu's been coming through for me lately with things to watch. They also got the what's the word exclusive. They got those mm-hmm. exclusive films from a uh, Blumhouse. Yes, and that's for Halloween. I'm excited to watch a couple of those because I know one is coming to Hulu, which is called Run, and it has Sarah Paulson in it. Oh yes, I had seen a trailer for that. It's gonna be a good one. Like, Sarah Paulson is so multi-talented. Like, it's insane her mm-hmm. range. And she does creepy, sexy lesbian very well. Imagine that. Like, I know, but, <laughs> look, <laughs> sometimes you gotta evolve to your ultimate form. As we have seen in Pokemon, sometimes we just need to evolve. And she is at her ultimate power, I believe. That's where Paulson X comes out. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm like, it's, it's very interesting too, because like she, again, she's one of the older women who's becoming more of a, pretty much a badass as an older woman in different shows and different movies. She's the one that got to say motherfucker on cable TV. Yes. Look at her now. But she's also interesting because like Anne Hathaway, who's a very popular, you know, we think of her as beauty pretty much. And she's yeah. been in things like Devil Wears Prada. But she's actually also filming a lot of action films now. I mean, she's 30s, 40s now. And she's, like, actively doing, like, stunts now Look, in action movies. Once you go Selena Kyle, you don't go back. It's amazing. I, I think it's just such a good position to be in right now. It's such a huge transformation going on for women in film industry. I think we're starting to be seen as more than just beauties. Because, I mean, no matter what, they're going to put beautiful people in it. They will never put average people in it unless they're the funny person in the movie. Melissa McCarthy. And, like, Melissa McCarthy, though, she's a very beautiful woman. Yeah, and she's gotten better. Because she was getting, like, typecast real hard. Very hard. And, like... I was like when she first came out as a huge comedy actress, like when she first started getting the roles, I was impressed because I knew her as Suki from Good More Girls, which was a funny character, but she was, you know, she was an average woman. It was very interesting to see her go from like utter tone comedy to like full on belly laugh comedy. Right. And that, those aren't usually my favorites, to be honest, because like I don't really like any of the stuff Rogan in it, which is blasphemy if you want to date apparently let me tell you if you if you don't like seth rogan like just not mention it if possible (laughs) keep that shit to yourself keep it to yourself because let me tell you they'll also force the movies on you and i literally watch pineapple express i I, that was the one i was forced to try and watch (laughs) oh my god 
And uh, I looked at him like 20 minutes in. I said, I'm bored. When does it become funny? And he's like, it was already supposed to be funny. I was like, you do understand they already made an underage sex joke. Like, the whole premise is Seth Rogen's character is dating, like, a high schooler. Like, that's the start of the movie. And, like, the next day he's supposed to go meet her parents. And I'm like, you are not 23, sir, in this movie. You you just aren't. The disapproval stamp. Because, like, I think right before that I was talking to him because I don't like James Franco either. And it's because James Franco has been blatant about being interested in underage girls and stuff. And, like, there's been text messages and stuff about that. And so I try not to associate with that kind of stuff. But I literally told him right before that movie, I was like, did you even remember this part? He's like, no. <laughs> I was like, great choice. Oh. Okay. great choice after i said reasoning why i don't like james franco and like honestly as an actor he doesn't seem like a bad actor no james- he's it's fairly talented yeah. he's just a shitbag he's just a like garbage of a human being so far and you can be a garbage human being by being just attracted to underage people to be honest yeah just just to clarify for anybody out there that is that is one of those things yeah i don't really care if you are a talented person if you try and go for a child, which is anyone under 18, you are garbage to me. We had touched on anime for a little bit. Got on that Sailor Moon track. Uh, we're yes. me. I don't think I had shared this story with you. Okay. So at work, we're finally having a Christmas party. Nice. And it's going to be held at my boss's house. And we've determined that it's going to be a secret Santa. I don't know who's setting that up okay. or what. But it's also apparently going to be an ugly sweater party. Ooh. Right. And if you know me, which you do, but they don't. No. Ugly sweaters aren't really my thing. No. Anything black is your thing, though. A- any clothing right. that's black goes on your body. <laughs> right. Which does not include ugly sweaters. Right. I do not appreciate random patterns. I don't appreciate the Christmas color aesthetic. Mm. It's just not my thing. Yeah. But that night, I get a text from one of my coworkers, okay. and it says, hey, I found your sweater. <gasps> so I shudder to admit, but I do not remember if we have discussed Full Metal Alchemist before. I I think we have briefly, but I do like Full Metal Alchemist. I never finished the series, but I did like it okay. for a little bit. Did you at least get through, I mean, it's the introductory, like, bits and pieces Mm -hmm. but also you need to finish both (laughs) series if possible yes the sweater Mm -hmm. has the typical oh my god i can't believe someone thought it was a good idea to stitch that into a sweater kind of vibe Mm -hmm. if you haven't seen full metal alchemist i'm about to spoil some shit so you can like skip ahead a little bit and it should be done Mm -hmm. but the sweater on the chest has the the nina hybrid the nina chimera And embroidered under that in very bold letters is Ed Word. (laughs) That is a you sweater. Yes. All of three people at that party are going to know what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. But those three people are going to want alcohol immediately. Oh, yeah. Definitely. They're just going to be like, nah, I didn't come here for this. (laughs) And that's my aesthetic, too, because everybody knows that at work that i'm a grinch because they've been through one christmas with me (laughs) so for me to show up in a depressing sweater Mm -hmm. would that's just that's me me (laughs) that is truly a you should i decide to go to the party which i'm hoping i do but at the same time that's a lot of people in a cramped space yeah and i'm trying to avoid those like the plague pun intended yeah that's yeah that's the thing like and no matter what we're not gonna be out this by that time so it may just be one of those things where you want to but you really can't in the end i've canceled on stuff because i was like i'm still too nervous to even be in an enclosed space with a small group of people to be honest right that same co-worker that sent me the um the sweater mm-hmm. actually invited me to a bonfire with a couple of our other co-workers at her place tonight and I was like, I would really like to go because that's also going to be like an excuse to not talk about work stuff mm-hmm. and to uh, drink till I can't no more, Holla. which I haven't done in forever. Mm-hmm. And the only thing is that I don't know what they do in their free time. So I don't know how much at risk I would be. Yeah, I was going to say, how many people is it too? Because like... Um, I know for sure that she said two other of our coworkers are coming, so that's four people if I went. And then I have very strong suspicions to believe, or reasons to believe, 
that her boyfriend would be there. So that's five. Yeah. And uh, I don't know who else the other two co-workers might possibly bring. But I, I like she set it up as like it's a bonfire in our fire pit. So I imagine it'd be rather intimate with like 10 people max. Yes. Absolute max there. Yeah. But even 10 people is a lot. And especially like because, you know, when I get drunk, I get real social. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you and, do. Uh, I don't want to die because I talk to people. That's totally fair. Like, it's just so unfortunate that that's our lives right now, too. It's like, right. I can't even go to a simple bonfire because there may be, like, four people there. It's like, that's such a stupid thing we have to worry about now. But it's a reality for us, unfortunately. Yep. And I have literal panic attacks just, like, or anxiety attacks, I guess, because panic attacks imply that there's not really a, a true source. But anxiety attacks just opening the door for deliveries. That's fair. I try and, like, I've been doing it, so I try and, like, disinfect it, but I still let it sit for a day before I touch it. Well, I was talking mostly about food, because, you know, I don't like to stock up on food. Yes, I was going to say, I I do know that's not a thing for you. I've been over to your home before. (laughs) You you just get water, and maybe he has, like, Coke Zero or Diet Coke there. I don't have snacks, like chips and shit. Some ramen, but, you know... (laughs) No, none actual food. No. Yeah. <laughs> actual food that will be needed to sustain you for the rest of the day. I'm trying to change that, though. So this is a really good segue because I'm not addicted to Facebook, but Facebook has been on a little bit of a roll for me. Oh. Here recently. Okay. So you know how they, like, they're constantly suggesting things to you, especially if you, like, click on a video and then you keep scrolling down yep. to see, like, related stuff? Definitely. They introduced me to, what is his name? And I immediately forgot his name, and I hate it. I can see his face. I don't want to call him the wrong name, but he's a YouTuber who's done a bunch, like, previously he was, like, a makeup artist, uh, possibly a graphic designer. Wow. And he knows his shit, and he just does, like, makeup tutorials, and he rips people on Instagram and TikTok doing makeup tutorials, Mm -hmm. and he'll be like, no, that's not when you want to use that product, (laughs) or, oh, please don't do that. Yeah. And I just... I love it. That was the first good recommendation from Facebook I've had in a very long time. Yeah. And then stemming off from that, I have found two bands that I liked enough that I added them on my Apple Music and they just had, they both just had an album release yesterday. Oh, cool. So that's been cool. So the first one that I found and I'm still getting used to all of, because their sound varies so much within the album, mm. and even like the the three or four singles they put out, they're all just so different. But um, the band is called I Don't Know How, But They Found Me. <laughs> That's the title? That's the band yes. name? What's the their album title? Acronym, I guess, is IDK, which I love because that just, yeah. that, that's, a, that's a whole mood. That's a mood. The name of the album is Razzmatazz. Okay. And the first single they put out and the first song on the album is titled Leave Me Alone. So you can imagine my excitement. <laughs> That's just... <laughs> Why didn't you just say, I create an album? <laughs> uh, right? Uh, but sadly, I had nothing to do with it. But when I looked them up on Apple Music, it said that they were uh, recommended for me because I liked Panic at the Disco. Mm. So if you would like... You can check them out. And the other one that they introduced me to is the name, The Wallows, I think is the name Mm. of that band. And it is, it's an actor dude, which usually I'm like the first to avoid an actor that gets into music Mm -hmm. later. Dylan. And I always get him mixed up with Logan Lerman. Hmm. Dylan. I'm trying to think. Lord. I I think he was the one in Maze Runner. I was going to say Dylan O'Brien, because that's the only one I could think of. Because that's Dylan O'Brien. If he was in Maze then Runner. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with that. Okay. He's in that band. It's his band. Or I don't know if it's his band. Yeah. But, you know. Oh. Um, I didn't know And they're very like. Into, I didn't know he was musical at all. Right? And Facebook was just like, hey, you might like this. And I listened to a, like, a snippet of one of their songs. And I was like, yeah, I kind of like that. And then when I was watching one of the music videos, I was like, is that, is that Dylan O'Brien? <laughs> yes, it was. It was indeed. But yes, it it, it is. Um, And they're very much like alternative, if you couldn't tell from like the blanks is like the most generic alternative Mm -hmm. 
band you can come up with. They got some good stuff. Uh, my favorite song of theirs so far is uh, Are You Bored Yet? <laughs> and the... So... <laughs> Like, all of this is hitting, like, really high notes for me, Mm -hmm. by the way. But, uh, it taught, like, through the the chorus and whatever, he's talking, like, he's talking about, like, watching the sunset with his boo thing. Ooh. Uh, Not, not, not his words, but, you know, he's, like, being romantic, we're watching the sunset, and then he's like, but I can't help but ask, are you bored yet? (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's me! Because I could, like, look at the sun, oh, that's pretty, and now I'm over it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I'm I'm also one of those people, like, unless I'm enjoying, like, a cup of coffee or something, if I'm sitting there enjoying something. Right, something that's literally keeping me in the moment. Yeah, I'm not going to sit there and watch the sunset for, like, 20 minutes. I That's just not my mood. Like, if I'm looking at something, changing sceneries, like, if I was on a ferry, I would be looking, because that's new stuff. And that's nothing the same. But if I'm just looking at a sunset, like, it's nice, it's pretty, I will move on now. I'll give it another glance in about a half hour when it gets purple. Yes, exactly. Like, and when it's purple, I'll probably take a picture because it's purple now. But that's probably it. (laughs) But uh, I said all of that to lead up to, because we were talking about food. Mm -hmm. And I said I was going to change that I don't have food in my apartment. You you did say that. I haven't told this to anyone else. (gasps) Okay. So hush, hush. The second YouTuber that Facebook recommended to me mm-hmm. earned a subscription from me oh. on YouTube. His name is Joshua Wiseman. I think that's right. Okay. But he does like his own fucking cooking show at home. Okay. And what got me was that like pretty much everything he makes is just like, it's really not that hard. And then he'll just like do it. And, and you're watching it. It's just like, yeah, that really doesn't look that hard. <laughs> And then he'll, like, interject some comedy, like, because he, he'll use, like, a, a voiceover or something while he's, like, pouring flour or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he'll be like, I make sure you pour half of the bowl of flour onto the counter because you don't know where the bowl is. <laughs> and, you know, that's Relatable. right up my fucking alley. Yep. Oh, my God. And then he has a separate series on there mm-hmm. where it's, uh, he has a but better and a but cheaper series. Ooh, okay. And so the first but cheaper that I watched was he got um like a seventy or seventy five dollar steak and cooked it like it's supposed to be cooked and he ate it and he was like yeah that's really good mm-hmm. and then he got like a five dollar steak mm-hmm. and cooked it and dressed it up and whatever and he spent like a total of maybe ten dollars on the cheaper steak the entire like fixing it up and everything he took a bite and he was like. Yeah, definitely the more expensive steak is, like, a lot better Mm -hmm. because that's what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. But for the difference in price, I wouldn't say it's worth it. Yeah. And it just, like, I don't know, that resonated with me and I was like, okay. I think it resonates because, like, we've, you know, a lot of people idolize certain things in life. And so that's Mm -hmm. one of those things where it's, like, a status thing. And so to see something done just as well for cheaper is like, yeah, why wouldn't I do it that way? Like, it'll save me money, it'll save me, like, a lot of hassle overall, to be honest. Right. I don't know when I'm planning on starting. <laughs> it's just a whole, foreshadowing. Like, stocking up, but, like, it, it's gotten me wanting to. Like, every time I see one of his videos get posted, I'm just like, I could be cooking. And, I mean, I am a chemist. It's not like they're different. Mm-hmm. True. I've been wanting to cook, but, like, I haven't had the energy and but (laughs) i watched brad mondo's videos for hair uh he's a hairstylist he has his own brand and everything and he he will always react to people trying to do at home diy like haircuts or dye jobs or bleach jobs and i relate so hard there was one time where I was watching him, and it was pretty much a video, basically what I did at one point. <laughs> it wasn't me, but it was like something similar I did, and I, he was like mm-hmm. reading it for fifth. I was like, "Look, I get harassed by my hairstylist anyway when I come in with dyed hair that they didn't do. <laughs> like, I don't need the second input of how bad I do as a home dye job. Like, right now, this is the negativity I am not here. Exactly. Like, I don't." I need to dye my hair to stabilize my mental status again, okay? I don't need this negativity. <laughs> mm. 
Like, I I need to, like, I was wanting to dye my hair this week, but I haven't gotten gloves, and that's the only thing holding me back, because I don't want red hands. Right. Uh, unless you're doing it for Halloween. That's true. I thought about that, too, because <laughs> Halloween's next Friday. Saturday. Next Saturday, yeah. By next Friday and Saturday, I have to go into Seattle for appointments, and I thought about that. I was like, I don't want to go into Seattle where I'm going to have red hands, because knowing me, no one's going to be scared. People are just going to be questioning what the fuck I did. Right. And they're going to be like, what the... yeah, they're like, what's going on over there? Yeah, they're going to be like, what you do? And if anything, it's going to give me more attention than I want. Because I never oh, want yeah. attention. When I'm on the bus, when I'm doing anything, I don't want attention. I just want to go from point A to point B and then go home. And <laughs> knowing me, no, I make friends on the bus. So, um, like. Definitely not on the bus. No, it's not like I want to make friends. Let me make that clear. I am not going out in search of friends. <laughs> I have headphones I have enough in. friends, thank you. I have headphones in. I'm looking down. I'm not engaging with anyone. But let me tell you, the drunks, they know me. <laughs> they can just mm. they can just sense me in the bus. <laughs> I feel like that's the thing. Like I the amount of drunk people I've spoken to on the bus and then I'll ask people who also ride the bus like regularly like me. I'll be like, Did you have this experience? And they're like, No, that has never happened Mm -hmm. like what are you talking to me about and i'm like and like i told people like i was like you know seattle public transit isn't that bad i mean in like mississippi i had people following me off the bus at least here no one's followed me off the bus yet so it's a little bit yeah so it's a little better like there's boundaries they may still talk to you on the bus but they're not gonna follow you off the bus once you get off they're like ah yeah it's like it's like how much (laughs) effort do i really want to put in like in mississippi they wanted to put in the effort if they had to ride the bus anyway they were like yeah whatever and i'm like that's because we ain't got anything better exactly and it's just like (laughs) at least here there's a lot of other things you can do there's new people to harass at the next stop like there's a lot of things that you can do here like in mississippi you can really wait i mean you don't know the next bus stop is gonna have people <laughs> you right. may you may be without a friend for like 10 minutes like do you really want to live that life without a sanctuary <laughs> you you reminded me talking about unwanted attention mm. so uh i was still very much in my emo phase when i started college mm-hmm. and for halloween i knew so disclaimer to anyone out there halloween's my favorite holiday mm. I either do everything for it or I do nothing for mm-hmm. it. And that's just how I keep the peace. <laughs> but I knew I couldn't like go all, all out because mm-hmm. I still had classes and stuff. Yeah. And so I wore this really thick, coarse cotton trench coat looking deal. Of course, it was all black. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it was made by Trip because everything good was made by Trip back then. Mm-hmm. And it was covered in chains. I, yeah, I can see you wearing something like that. And I wore that all day. Yeah, I can see you doing and that. And my thinking was that I want to celebrate my favorite holiday. And if I wear this get up, no one's going to bother me. Because oh. they're going to think I'm going to kill them. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But, as as I said, unwanted attention. <laughs> so, I get out of my Cal 1 class. And uh, for whatever reason, I was just slow at putting up my stuff Mm -hmm. or whatever i straggled but like the next professor came in that had a a lecture in that room and she was like you dressed up for halloween and i was like yeah (laughs) she was like i like it thanks and then i like awkwardly shuffled away and i was like why did you talk to me what (laughs) were you trying to protect yourself because nobody's being protected (laughs) like (laughs) it was just like why that the opposite of what I wanted to happen. You were supposed to stare at me and be like, oh my god. That's probably because she was at one point before becoming a professor. She was like us. She. Oh, I'm still I'm still going to be like that. I was going to say, let us know. When you said like I was still in my emo phase, I was like, let me know when you're out of it. I haven't noticed. Oh, yeah. I, will, I will definitely like. So so expect that text on my death. Yeah. Like, I'm finally over it. <laughs> and then I'll be gone. Yes, and then you'll say one more, like, last Evo, like, death sentence before you die, (laughs) and your nurse will recite it at your funeral. Uh, but speaking of Halloween, since it's coming up, um, I haven't done, um, how you say literally anything Mm -hmm. to prepare. Mm -hmm. I know I can't go anywhere, so I didn't buy a costume. Um, I had these grand plans, because it's also been years since I did my horror-thon, also disclaimer, 
horror is my favorite film genre. And I just haven't. Like, I started Bly Manor mm. on Netflix. I got one episode in. And I like it. It just, I just didn't go to the second episode. Yeah. Uh, I know I also told you that I wanted to buy the revival arc of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Which yes. I still need to do. Because apparently that's really good. I want. I need to watch that too. I need to do that. I love Are You Afraid of the Dark so much. Yeah. Oh, and I saw that The Lighthouse is on Amazon Yeah. Prime. I'm definitely watching that at some point very soon. Because I've wanted to see that for a while. I heard it was very good. Like, I've heard nothing. Like, I'm very fortunate, just for everyone to understand. Like, and I think you know this, Lance, but I'm not positive. I'm very good somehow at not getting spoiled for things. So, like. That is a gift. Yeah, I'm really good at it. Like, I still don't know what happens in Avengers Endgame. I haven't watched the movie. Still don't know. I don't know how you've gone this long. I'm, I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> like, and I think it's because, like, my um my closest friends that I go to the movies with or watch movies with, they don't, they usually watch it first because they go out on the first day to do it. Mm. I've never really been one of those people. Like, um I think the last time I did something like that was, like, Black Panther or something. So for me to go out and do it quickly is not going to happen. Like, I am usually a year behind. Like, I think at one point I was... I think, yeah, one of the other times, like, I know I went to the movie theater soon after was Wonder Woman. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not spoiled for anything. I didn't know what, like, uh, last night I was watching Hereditary with a friend, and I had no idea what it was going to be about. All I knew was people told me, like, depending on my mood, I may get, like, a lot of thoughts going. Right. It's a ride. It's it's a ride, (laughs) but I really enjoyed it. Like, it was a ride that I didn't anticipate. it It is so good. I think it's the right idea to anticipate because we're so used to now having, like, a lot more depth and, like, more things you have to read into. But it was really, like, it was a good, solid, point-blank movie. Like, you didn't have to go searching for a lot of answers. Like, they, they told you pretty much what's going on. Yeah, if you're just paying attention, you're gonna get what's happening. Yeah, it was, um, it was really subtle, but it wasn't, like, where I had to question it because they're trying to, like, really be really smart about it. They were just like, this is what happens. And, like, I really appreciated, like, overall, it's just, like, when we started this episode, talked about Linkin Park, in the end, nothing really matters. <laughs> and that's the whole point of that movie, pretty much. In the end, you really can't I think we have a title it. for this episode. Yeah, right? <laughs> But, uh, so that, uh, reminds me, since you just watched Hereditary, yes. have you not seen Midsummer? I have not. No, it was actually it between- is, It is so good. Uh, last- Add that to your list. It's on the list. Last night, it was actually between, uh, Midsummer and, uh, Hereditary. But I've been wanting to watch Hereditary, like, all week. Right. And so I was like, I really want to get this, like, watched, but I didn't want to watch it alone, because I didn't know- Because no one told me- What was gonna happen. Yeah, no one told me what was gonna happen. They just told me, like- Depending right. where you are, like you could feel things, and I was like, "All right, yeah, no, that's cryptic." I don't know if you, uh, I don't know if you know, but Midsummer is done by the same guy. I heard that. That's why I'm kind of excited now to see it because I think it's going to be another. I think this director is just very good at being able to explain everything and not leave you questioning. Oh, yes. You actually feel like you watch the whole movie. You don't really like wonder about a lot of stuff. You, it's pretty much like point blank cut and dry that's what it is yeah and i i appreciate that it's not something again we see a lot anymore but don't confuse if you haven't seen it it's not shallow it's not like a modern slasher or anything you do need to be present and you need to think it's definitely something you have to be following along with but i appreciate that it was not something like after the movie where i was going to be having a lot of questions i had to look up because it wasn't explained like i think uh there was only one instance where i was like i don't really get this and then i looked up and the director pretty much said eh i just decided that i was like okay (laughs) cool (laughs) we'll find that yeah i was like that's that's all i needed to know because i couldn't it was confusing to me but i was like all right he admits like i just wanted to and honestly if you have the money and ability to direct you get those rules (laughs) right you get to establish. You do. I'm just like, God, Hereditary is just such a good movie. But yeah, Midsummer's on my list. And then... Um, and we mentioned The Lighthouse. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure you're aware that that's done by the same dude that did The Witch. 
I was not, and I still have not seen The Witch. <gasps> and you fix. Let me just tell you again. That's three more movies. I right have there. no Bra- idea what happens. I'm guessing the there's a witch. So good. <laughs> I don't know how I avoid movies, but I'm really, it's not like I even do it on purpose. It's just like, eh. <laughs> it's like. See, it's a gift. If you can just fumble around and not get anything spoiled, that is a gift. Like, you are blessed by somebody. Yeah, I never, I almost never get spoiled. Like, I can't even remember the last time I got spoiled for something. It's been a hot minute. I think the last time was like five years ago or something. During this time um, of movies coming out, I was teaching small people. And <laughs> let me tell you, I was mostly teaching um, people who were interested in these movies. And so when they came, they went to the like midnight showing. And so they came into school the next day and they that's all they wanted to talk about. I was like, well, I haven't seen it yet. And they were like, okay, I won't spoil it. Three weeks later, when they were still wanting to talk about it, I looked at them in the eye and said, I still haven't watched it. And they're like, I don't understand. I was like, I have to teach. I have things to pay. I am an adult. I I am what you call an adult. It's very sad and very realistic for where I am. And like most of them were cool about it, but like all of them looked at me like, I don't understand. And they didn't even, because I think Endgame happened while I was teaching. And then I watched, uh, I didn't watch Infinity Wars. So they were like, can we at least talk about Infinity Wars? I was like, no, I haven't seen that. And then, um, uh, also no. Yeah. And then like, I think at the same time, like I know Captain uh, Marvel came out around the time I was teaching. Mm-hmm. And that was another one where they were like, let me tell you, there's nothing more um, reinvigorating about yourself when you get roasted by like 10 to 15 year olds on the daily. <laughs> like it just, it, may, it builds up your confidence <laughs> as a person in society. <laughs> it was amusing. I've never seen so many short people besides myself be so angry about something. <laughs> I've never seen so many disgruntled shorties. Yeah. And the problem was a lot of them were still taller than me. Like, it was really sad. Like, 12-year-olds were taller than me. And I was, like, looking up at them saying, like, please pay attention. (laughs) Please. I'm down here. I am down here trying to teach you. (laughs) I am am decent at this. Please listen. Please don't make this hard on me. You don't understand. Life is hard. (laughs) I'm very much of a pop culture person. I like knowing about pop culture, even if I don't I, watch I, it. I could guess that, but, <laughs> you know, that was for y'all. Yes, yes. The people that really matter, Lance. Uh, <laughs> um, I, oh. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, had we talked about um, that Brittany got her financials away from her father? I just saw that the other day. I'm so happy for her because I saw that because right. um, Jamie Lynn is the one now in charge of it, I believe. Because mm-hmm. like I think that's right because like he's already proven he is not trustworthy for her right. and in, in her best interest. Like and that's the thing like yeah he's the title of dad but he's proven throughout her career that he cannot be trusted for her financially and um, especially since he's become the one primarily in charge. And I, while, you know, people do question Brittany's mental status, like, I think it's good that she even just said, like, I don't care who has it as long as it's not him, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And that just shows you, like, she doesn't even care. She doesn't need it back. She just needs someone who will actually do what's in her best interest. Mm-hmm. Mm, right. Because I saw some statements where he was trying to use the money in an effort to control um, her being able to move forward in relation her relationship with her boyfriend of three years. Because they, they mm-hmm. thought about having a baby, but that was, like, something, like, she couldn't ha- have done. And that was something, like, a line drawn. I was like, she you can question it. And, like, he's the one who's deciding to, you know, impregnate her. So it's his responsibility, too. Being able to choose, the, you know, what someone does with their own body is just not up my alley. Not at all. No. I'm glad he's out of it. But, like, Jamie Lynn Spears is a whole different thing. Like, she's... Her nutshell of a life is crazy to me. Because, like, not only is she Britney Spears' like, sister, she's also, like, a songwriter now for country. And, oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And, like, she had her baby when she was young. Like, that's why Zoe 101 got canceled. Now, see, I made a joke when I saw that story initially. I was like, hopefully she don't fuck it up like she fucked up that Nickelodeon gig. <laughs> Well, see, I think that's the thing. Like, she seems like she's actually become a very responsible adult. And um, she looks like she handles her own stuff for the most part. Okay. Like, she keeps it. It looks like she keeps herself, like, for the most part, unless she's doing some publicity. I don't actually see much about her. 
to be honest. Right. I kind of forgot she was a thing until I saw that story, and I was like, oh, yeah. She yeah. Was a sister. Yeah, and that was the thing, like, because um, Jamie Lynn is, uh, she she's a mother now, too. She has two children now, because um, I believe she has the one from Zoe 101. And then um, during that time period, and then she had a new one with her husband, I believe. I think she's matured a lot. I'm hoping so. Right. Like, I'm one of those people who, even if they get pregnant as a teenager and they decide to, you know, go through with the pregnancy and to have the child themselves and raise it, I hope, I always hope that they mature and they actually do what's best for the child and like she looks like she's doing that. Like, she looks like she's living a very relatively calm life away from the press and i think that's ideal especially since Brittany's never out of the press right. even though she's like fully grown now and i just think the whole um jamie spears because i believe that's her father's name it's wild to me because like i mean her son's got a protective order against him and so did kevin her ex that alone should have been like questionable about you know maybe he shouldn't be in charge of her stuff but the fact that it took so long, like, I think it would have been, like, fine if, you know, she said, I would like someone else to be in charge of it. And they just said, okay, let's put someone else in charge of it. and Or, like, someone to overlook him. Like, overlook what he's doing. Right. And not just have him be the primary. I think that would have even been better in her mind. But the fact that he had primary control of it, that was the problem. Because he just proved he couldn't be in control with her kids alone. So why would she want him in control for money or anything? Like, that's just any adult, I feel. Like, if I can't trust you with my child, why would I trust you with my money? And that's the tea. That is the tea. Uh, but yeah, I just, yeah, I go, I don't know. It's like, life is just wild right now. <laughs> but I'm glad for Brittany, because that's something good that's happened to her. Yes, I saw that, and that was, that was the initial thought. It was like, good for her, because she deserves it. Yeah, that's something positive we need in life. Right now, like, uh, one of the other positives I'm looking forward to is Dolly Parton's uh, Christmas special on Netflix. Because uh, I'm about that life. I didn't know that was a thing, but now I do. Oh, let me tell you. It's a thing. Because you know who's in it? Uh, Christina, I think her name's Brinkley. I've, I'm not sure about that part. But she's a musical wonder who has been on different musicals. She was in Mamma Mia. Uh, she... Is fantastic as an actress. She's one of my favorite actresses. She was in Birdcage. She's done so many great things. She was in The Grinch. If you knew her from that, she was The Grinch's love interest. Oh. Uh, and, and that's, <laughs> I was going to say, that's how I usually get people to remember who she is. Martha May Hoopier. Yes. And so she's going to be in Dolly Parton's Christmas, and she's going to be playing, like, essentially a female Grinch, from what I understand. Uh, she's going to be trying to evict people. I believe uh, Debbie Allen, who uh, is a phenomenal actress and director, and she is going to be, she's from, she plays Catherine on Grey's Anatomy, who is uh, Richard Weber's love interest. And she's a fantastic phenomenal actress so like the combination and then because i saw i recently saw this ad like last night and then cherry on top dolly parton's gonna be the angel in this dolly oh. parton's gonna be playing an angel and this is not her first time playing an angel everyone so like she will because she's been an angel all her fucking life all her fucking life i will defend that woman forever she is such a good positive influence on the world and literally that's been my obsession this year of 2020 has become solely Protect Dolly Parton at all costs. Yes, Dolly Parton is the light we need. And anyone who comes for her, I, I'm gonna no, we're just not taking it. This is a pro Dolly Parton podcast. Like, get out of here with that negativity. Like, that's our like secondary tagline. Yes, <laughs> that's for that's for uh, just everyone to understand. We will not take it. Primarily me, but you know, I'm not gonna speak for both of us. I'll join in because yeah. I have to. <laughs> I was going to say, he's really not saying much. I'm saying, don't come for Dolly Parton. Don't come for her while I'm here. <laughs> but yeah, so that's another positive. She, I believe her one is coming out on November 1st, I believe. Her okay. new holiday special. That's really close. Yeah. Her, she's been she's been doing a lot this year for being the year of quarantine. She, a lot of her stuff's coming out. She got a new holiday album. She got that new uh, movie. I can't remember. If Har- I think Hot Strings came out last year, but like she's she's coming out. She got her lyric book out, which is where she describes and goes through um, stories behind her lyrics. Yeah, she's coming. She's coming full on, 
in her 70s. Like, she's coming out for it. And she's even, she's even in talks, like, she's okay with doing Playboy again. Like, classy Playboy. Ooh. Yes. And she's about to be 75, I believe. And you, you go, Dolly. That may be the first time I actually pay for Playboy. Let me tell you. <laughs> get a gander at that. I was going to say, I, Playboy may actually get money from me solely because of Dolly Parton. Right. So, <laughs> watch that be their most sold out <laughs> ever. Which oh, is sure. 75 year old Dolly Parton doing Playboy. I'm here for it. I am here for this content. Give it. <laughs> And like I'm, because right now it's just being teased. That's been in talks. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're we're just gonna do it. This is less out talking, now. more doing. Exactly. We we have now told this to the universe that this is a possibility. We must do it. We need to collapse our wave function so that mm-hmm. there's only one possibility. Exactly. And like the only like you know since the holidays are coming, the literally the only thing I've done holiday wise consistently this year has been related to Animal Crossing. To be honest, that is where I'm decorating the hell out of my island with a lot of pumpkins, a lot of scarecrows, a lot of orange. Too much orange, to be honest. But still, Halloween. That's pretty much what I've been up to. I've I've made my island. I don't think you've ever played Animal Crossing, right? I have not. This was my first time playing it. And let me tell you, if you are someone, if you're like me, who has spent time designing homes in your Pinterest or watching uh, House Hunters and judging uh, their $3 million limits on a $100,000. Well, I've done that. Yes. So, yes. So, if you've done this, let me tell you, I've got the game for you. It's called Animal Crossing, where you are the only human. And neighbors are animals you can dress up, pretty much. And they all have their own homes. And you pretty much own the island. Except you don't. Which is where Tom Nook, the crook, comes in. Because he makes you pay for everything. And even when you build a bridge. Like, let's say you build a bridge. 190000 Like a capitalist. Yes. Yes, he is. Let me tell you, I've had to build a lot of bridges. I've literally left it to see if any villager leaves money. A hundred. One person left a hundred bells after one night. And I came through and I paid it off in three days because I was being lazy. <laughs> no. That is like it's like the ultimate capitalist because like it starts off by you buying a timeshare pretty much on an island. The first trap. Yes, it starts off with tricking you and wanting you to buy a timeshare. Like, you know you're getting ripped off initially. But let me tell you, it's been a great um, self-esteem booster because right now I have like 4.5 million bells in the bank. So I can design my island anywhere I want. It's the most powerful thing ever for a year 2020. You done made it. <laughs> I've made it. I have made it. And I don't understand. I don't, like, it has been a major coping mechanism so I don't understand people who aren't playing it because I'm like, you do understand you get to dress up in there, right? You get to, like, mess with relationships. You are playing God in a world you get to design. Like, it is the ultimate. Oh, that's right up my alley. Exactly! That's what I'm saying. Like, it is the ultimate. I switch. <laughs> get you a Switch? It's... I literally just bought a Switch. Um, I first bought a Switch for uh, Pokemon Sword versus Shield. I still haven't finished it. Neither have I. I'm not good at finishing things. And, or starting things. But then my friend was like, you need to get Animal Crossing. Because we were both obsessed with setting things up. We looked at each other's Pinterest for how we want our ho- future homes to be. And she was like, you, you, you need this. You need this in your life. And I was like, alright. And I bought it. I was like, I needed this in my life. This was a need. This was not a want. This was a need to get through. Well, I am glad that it's serving its purpose. Yeah, it's, it's definitely serving its purpose. Yeah, so that's been my major thing. And then I've been trying to get into other games, too. Like, I've been playing Fall Guys, which was a major game this year. And I am horrible at it, but I play it. I want to I wanna, I wanna play. It's, let me tell you, if you want to play, you and I can play. Like, I love it. It's 20 bucks, but it's so good. It's so silly. I love it. I've watched videos on that and Among Us. <gasps> I so love just... Among Us. I want to play Among Us so bad. I haven't played yet. So yes, we can We can totally do this. We can totally play together. I was never a video game person as like a younger 
person Mm -hmm. i just couldn't get into it like a lot of my friends loved it i just couldn't do it i would play i would watch them play but i was like i don't get this and then i started watching um achievement hunter based on recommendation and i've been obsessed now with gamers like i watch uh markiplier play game i love him so much i just discovered him like i didn't know he existed the millions of people that watch him that is a shame I, I had no idea. I I found him um a couple of days ago actually and I've been watching like his uh Uno card games that he plays. I've been Those are those are good. Those are mm-hmm. good. I've been watching um a lot of his Among Us and like I've just been watching a lot of compilations too of just Mark and Ethan together because wow, that's a dynamic. Yes, they're, <laughs> they're very they're very good together. They are amazing but together. Yeah, his, um so his scary games I haven't watched series. any of those. It's very good, and my favorite of his videos, I think other than, like, his Rage videos, when he did, like, um, getting over it and golfing over it Mm. and the things like that, those are just pure poetry. Like, he just finished a series um, playing Pogo Stuck. (gasps) I've seen that. Basically the same thing. Yeah. And they are beautiful. To see him get so angry is so beautiful. But um, other than that, his big claim to fame mm-hmm. is his five nights at freddy's videos oh is that how okay i see i haven't watched any of those i love five nights at freddy's though they are great he has a playthrough of every single main game oh my god i've watched i've watched a lot of those um from uh let's plays on achievement hunter and stuff and mm-hmm. but those things are so funny i've watched so many people play those now i now watch people who just do um the game episode on your phone have you have you seen a commercials for episode before yeah yeah it's like a choose your own adventure mm-hmm. i've watched those now <laughs> and i'm like this is fascinating. And I'm like, this is not fascinating. I've played these games. But watching someone else play them, I'm like, oh, what are they going to do? Is wild as a concept, to be honest. Just watching someone else play and be like, yeah, this is fascinating. But that's who I am now. I am now interested in gaming, which is never something I thought I would be. You open yourself up to a whole world. I know. And it may just be because, like, also, like, the graphics and stuff used to not be very good. So maybe it's that. Or maybe maybe just stupid games didn't come out nearly in time for me. Like, Fall Guys is a stupid game, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot about timing. It's a lot about timing. Exactly, which I'm not good at. Like, I'm either before or after. I'm never on time. So the fact that you have to be on time for that thing is, like, horrible. But it's so funny. And I just hate when people grab you. I get... People get very grabby in that game. <laughs> it's so grabby. I don't get it. But, um... But Markiplier's... Mm-hmm. Uh, especially his Five Nights videos. He's got a whole playlist just dedicated on his channel to him. I'm gonna have to look but, at um, that for Halloween. Yes. Definitely start you will be they are so many like and by playthrough i mean he doesn't just go through Mm -hmm. the five nights because for just about every game if not every game Mm -hmm. there is a sixth night oh that's like super hard okay and then each game tends to have a custom night where you can manipulate (gasps) the difficulty of each of the animatronics. And so for every game, he tries to beat all the animatronics at the same time at their hardest setting. Oh, that's good. I haven't seen that kind of thing. It is so great. And then one of the main entries is called Ultimate Custom Night, where that's literally all it is. It's every animatronic that's ever been in any Five Nights game, plus some new ones that he kind of just made up. Wow. for that game and he goes on a fucking journey <laughs> trying to beat that on max difficulty and it is it's a journey like like he streamed it i think he streamed it all i could be wrong though but like it's like six or seven videos and they're all like four hours long oh my god that's amazing and it's just it's just him repeat it and repeat and repeat and and then he'll like pause for a second and like try to piece together where he's messing up and then he goes back in and just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat the tenacity of that man is something to behold (laughs) he is he's extremely funny and i because like i also have on him uh i think it's the eunice anus uh on this yes. uh Una's on us is very good yes it's on um that channel where his mom uh is telling like korean ghost stories 
that just got uploaded mm-hmm. this week. Oh, I need to look at that. It's down. it's Mistake. it's good. It looks good. I just love how silly Mark is, but then when you give him Ethan, it's like he's an adult. <laughs> and it's like right, except for like random snaps where he'll like mm-hmm. he'll just all of a sudden left field, really fucking silly, and then he snaps back and he's like, "Yes, I'm the adult." Yes, exactly, and I love that <laughs> because I think that's the point Ethan gets to. He's like, "This is not the real Mark." I know this. And Mark's just like, no, someone needs to be an adult. I don't think you understand. One of us needs to be the adult. (laughs) And we can't count on you. (laughs) And Amy's behind the camera. Like, you you cannot be trusted. And Amy's in the position of she can only be trusted. Like, she's the only one trusted to do this. God, I love... I just... That's been, like, one of my favorite things. Besides, like, uh, watching Gen X Pen's episode videos. Because she just started publishing new ones during quarantine i would just watch the silliest games and play the silliest games and i'm okay with that i mean <laughs> you like what you like and at this point whatever you gotta do to get through exactly what we gotta do i think that's the point i think that's what i was missing with video games like a lot of people like a long storyline i'm just like or it could be really silly <laughs> and the old like okay i don't know if you ever played kirby yarn have you ever played Kirby Yarn before? Oh, Yoshi's Yarn. Yo- yeah, something like that. No, it was Yoshi's Yarn World. Oh. Yeah, that's what it was. It's Yoshi's Yarn World. World. It's literally just you as a yarn. You can't die. But let me tell you what you can do. You can swallow the other Yoshi into your mouth a lot. And I know that because that's all me and my friend would do. And we were told, like, you guys should be able to play this. Like, we were trying to figure out if we could play well together, pretty much. And, like, we played it, and all we kept doing was swallowing each other into the mouth and, like, pushing the other one out. And we're just, like, we would do that for, like, five minutes on accident sometimes. (laughs) And (laughs) we were just, like, we need to move past this. We're still on the same level. (laughs) We need to do something. This is not right. Yeah, so that's another very silly game that I do enjoy. I just haven't gotten to it. But I really want to actually play uh, Dead by Daylight. Yes. I I want to play that. It's It looks so good, but I've never been... I love watching plays of it, though. I've watched so many people play it live and not live, and I just... It's so funny. Yes. See, we're, it's only our first episode, and we're coming up with so many ideas. We got, like, a future YouTube episode <laughs> in the works. Yeah, we're going to end up with a Twitch stream. Like, we're making moves. We're making moves. Well, like, we also, um, because, like, when we were talking about starting this podcast, too, you and I both, like, having, we both need stuff to do outside of work. And yes. um, that's something we were both struggling with because where you live and where I live, we're both kind of isolated from people we usually, you know, talk to, hang out with, especially during the pandemic, we're more isolated. <laughs> and so we, um, you know, starting these different things and just having something like, hey, I can go do this now. It's like for us is a lot and is very positive because then we have to actually do it and not just keep talking about doing it. Right. Which is for us a big issue we do have because we like we like to plan, but it's the plan into action. Much. Yes, we plan a lot. <laughs> but I mean you can tell in this one episode. We've been planning a lot. But um for us to actually sit down and actually do it, it does take um energy out of us and it takes us a lot to even though we have fun talking together. That's why we started talking about doing a podcast, because we were like, This is yeah. too much fun and people would tell us like And other people need to hear this shit. Yes, I was gonna say other people would tell us like we they like just hearing us talk to each other and like the randomness, random like thought processes we have and like cause we'll go from real silly conversations, like talking about like like I was talking about Animal Crossing, going from something like that to talk about like something more serious, or we'll swerve into depression or something. Yes, just like, and then it comes out, out, of out of nowhere. We are that deer in the headlights for you. That is what our conversations are. <laughs> like, how do we get here? You came out of nowhere. That's what we do. But yeah. So hopefully we can you know do all the things because, uh, like she said, we we like to plan and we like to plan a lot. Mm-hmm. Um. So this is. A really, really, really big step Mm -hmm. for us to actually sit down and do it. Because I think at this point, this podcast, in one form or another, has been in the works for three or four years. I was going to say, it's been over two, because that was the last time I saw you in person. Yes. So. So, it's been, I would would say probably, um, I think we were in, I think how it started was, like, people would tell us, like, we would be funny. And we're funny. And um, I'm telling you, we're funny. 
we're just we're just doing our first show. We're funny, I swear. Validate me. Validate me. But yeah, so like people would tell us like we were just funny. But then uh I think uh one of our friends uh husbands now actually talked to us about doing the podcast cuz he said like he would he would listen to us cuz he thought we were oh, funny. Also, um because I don't remember if I mentioned it on air or off air, but I'm going to go with on air cuz we've been on air for 2 hours now. Yep. The the same so the coworker that I told you about that invited me to the bonfire yeah. uh later on she so when i when she asked me i was like okay i don't know when kayla and i are planning on recording and i know i can't just be like yeah i should be available at this time because we're two hours apart and mm-hmm. that's two hour time zones apart we had mentioned that she mentioned mississippi before i'm in mississippi she's in washington state yep so there's the time difference. And so I didn't want to commit to any specific time, but I also didn't want to be like, no, I have plans because like I would like to go. Mm-hmm. So I texted her back and I was like, hey, um, you know, I'd love to, but uh, my bestie and I are supposed to be recording our first episode of our new podcast. And so she was like, oh, what's it about? Aww. And so I literally gave her like the real generic, just like oh, it's literally just going to be us shooting the shit, mm-hmm. talking music, movies anything literally yep she was like okay well when you get it all set up i want to listen and i was oh. like oh so we, we got our first listener oh my god that's so exciting one out of one <laughs> one out of a lot hopefully hopefully, hopefully. no pressure though no. yes yeah no there's a, there's a lot of pressure yeah there's too much pressure on everything like if you if y'all don't listen to this there's not really a reason for us to do this so please listen no and like <laughs> you know if you like us you could you know, follow up on us. Yeah, Check um, up on us. You know, subscribe or follow or, you know, whatever they're doing on whatever app you're on. Mm-hmm. Leave us a rating. A comment would be awesome. Yes. And then as we uh, said before, we got that email up. Again, it's jadedroses at gmail.com. We should have a Facebook and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, possibly an Instagram, but that'll probably be later if we do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so both um, of those should be... I have to actually get in the spirit of taking photos. I was going to say, I'm not <laughs> usually good at get, taking photos either. <laughs> and so for us to run an Instagram, like, that's going to be a challenge for us. We barely run our own Instagrams. Right. I, live... I think the last time I posted on mine was maybe a year and a half ago. No, because it's been since before i got my current job it's been like two years i was gonna say i usually um photo dump on instagram so (laughs) i won't post anything for like six months and then i'll just post 60 photos or something this is what i've been up to (laughs) yeah exactly because like people always ask like what are you up to what are you doing you don't talk i'm like yeah i don't wait for my update yeah i was like i really like i i think it's because um you know a lot a lot of times i would think like if i don't have anything interesting to talk about like what's the point of me talking to be honest but then a lot of people have just said like i like checking up on you which means like i like to know where you are at like so right. like what are you doing like if you, are you seeing anyone even if it's like just something simple like i'm going from vegetarian to vegan like they like updates on your personal life to make sure you're actually i think it's also to like help to know that someone else around you is moving forward it kind of helps you to keep moving forward but i'm very bad at that too <laughs> i'm very bad i keep it in contact I'm so bad at it, and, like, I'm really grateful. And this will force us to stay in contact. With yes. And, I mean, we did pretty well. Like, we were doing yeah. fine. We weren't doing the best. But for us, we were doing well. <laughs> Be, like, once a fortnight, we're just like, you okay? Yeah. yeah. Work still suck? Yeah. Cool. And that was our conversation. <laughs> that was literally it. Like, I think if we knew we were going through something rougher that week, we would check in on each other that week. Oh, yeah. But otherwise, we would just wait two, three weeks, because we're like... Cause, Cause, problems only last for seven days. Right? <laughs> it can't last longer. Literally, no. me at work all month, all my life, all month has been just. It can't get any worse. It really can't. There's no way. <laughs> Next week will be better. There's no way this could get worse. Enter everything that's happened in October. Uh, literally, I mean, like this whole year has been crazy and not great. Let me tell you, month of October uh, has a special place now in hell for itself for me. <laughs> In hell right now is going to be October 2020's, like, placement. Like, ready. 
like for a mine. As long as Halloween gets to go too, because Halloween should never be alone. No, and like I like I'm like very excited for Halloween now because like I have a couple of plans now to do um some movie marathons next weekend and potentially nice. yes, very nice. And then uh potentially doing an Animal Crossing friend date, which is just where we go to each other's Animal Crossing after an hour of talking on the phone. And right. The modern Netflix and chill. Exactly. And I'm loving it, honestly. Animal Crossing and phone talk, like FaceTime, I'm cool with that. Like, honestly, that's how people should date. Let me see your Animal Crossing island. I don't know if I can trust you. Let me what state s- Let me see where you live. <laughs> let me see where you're living on your now island. You're, now you're making me jealous because <laughs> I don't have any plans for it's Halloween. Yeah, I... Well, I, these just came into play, like, in the last two days. Like, I had nothing planned until two days ago where people told me, like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> nothing. The usual of nothing. Not anymore. Not anymore. Now I got plans. Now I got I to gotta be very social that day, which is going to be great. But, like, I have a sleep study. So I, I've been getting very tired and very uh, exhausted. I have sleep apnea, most likely. Um, I've scared many uh someone sleeping over <laughs> and um just because i breathe weird and i'll make strange noises and it's always been you just made a noise it's never like you snore very loudly it's very rarely they'll just tell me i snore it's like you made a very weird strange noise that i had to wake you up because i didn't know what was happening <laughs> and i was like okay <laughs> probably should get this checked but i'm doing a sleep study next friday which means i have to be out and about on next friday and on halloween i'm gonna make sure i dress up though i'm making i have like a hogwarts sweater i'm gonna wear one day the other day i have something else i forget what it is though i have another I- idea for alpha plan because if i'm going out i might as well dress up even if i have to wear my face mask i'm gonna dress nice and cute right because like it's a little things in life at this point friday mm-hmm. i'll be in my work garb so they're fat well but um since i don't have anything to do saturday mm-hmm. i'm thinking that i might treat myself to a little bit of elk elk and you know just haul myself up and just take the weekend to not really do anything yeah i was gonna say why not um, just drink maybe get yourself a little uh like dip and uh cheese dip and some tortilla chips and make do like a scream marathon that would be good for you oh, i'm definitely doing my scream because that's every year. yeah so like some alcohol a little bit of mexican food i think that would be a good time for you honestly that'd just make me miss margarita nights i oh. probably won't dip too hard no nah. uh, margarita nights are wild though that's the thing you gotta be yeah. you gotta be ready when you go out for a margarita night like i haven't been yeah, out because because uh, if you're not you end up calling for help out in the bathroom look <laughs> look <laughs> we don't need to talk about that yet we just started this we have many episodes left i will we don't need to go into that we have too many stories we could do a whole episode about margarita nights honestly like the stories just alone from margarita oh, nights could. are just too wild to be honest i could yeah, and I hope that this next week treats us both better because I know Hopefully. it's been crazy for you. And mm-hmm. I mean, work's just been the big thing for me, but you know, I'm also yeah trying to get this application done for grad school. So there's that. What you're gonna you're gonna ace and you're gonna get it. And oh yeah, I've been trying you know, really they, hard you... to speak it into existence. Like when I'm talking with people, I say when mm-hmm. I get accepted. Exactly, do it. Because, like, A, you can move to this side of the country. Right. B, you can be in California. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so, and C, and not in the C, South. I was going to say, C, not in the South. D, I can easily come to see you or you can easily come to see right. me. If we, and, like, honestly, like, a plane ride probably is cheap, that too. Really so, like, is. a one-way mm-hmm. plane ride. So, like, honestly, it wouldn't be that bad for me to come down to Cali every now and then. So I guess that's a good place for us to stop. Uh, you guys kind of got to know us a little bit, a little bit. and a little bit of our chaos in trying to communicate <laughs> on a wavelength that most people do not understand. Again, how you guys feel is really important to us. So make sure you are leaving comments wherever you know you're listening to this. Make sure you're following us if you want to keep up to date with us. We will try and have our email and our uh, Facebook linked 
in the description below of wherever you're listening to this to. I think that's about yeah, I think it. That is about it. Yeah. Thanks for listening to our first episode. Yay. Yay. And um, this has been the Jaded Roses and the Broken Mirror podcast. And we are pretty, we are thorny, and we are very much over this bullshit. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.